to look back at the last Forge FC contest. Simply stunning stuff. And finally, their goal. Here is Match and Review. My word, what a rocket. With Anthony Urcioli on the Forge Audio Network. Hello, Forge fans. It's the Forge Audio Network. I'm Anthony Urcioli. It is the Match in Review. And, oof. This one feels good. It feels good already. Forge FC with thorough dominance from start to finish in the 905 Derby against their arch rivals, York United. This was clinical at every stage and every facet of their game. And it was just complete. I mean, listen, it, as the score suggests, 4 nothing dominance. But I, I mean, even... Somehow, if you watch the match, it was even more dominating than that 4 nothing result suggested because Forge hit a lot of posts in this one. In fact, at one point, they hit three posts in a span of five minutes and still ended up winning 4 nothing. That should tell you how dominant this performance was. So let's go. Let, 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 let's go through it. And let's, let's have some fun here because it's been tough sledding. For those of you who have uh, consistently tuned in for these live match in reviews, uh, there's been some rough ones. We've been waiting for this version of the club to, to show up, and here it is, and, and the results speak for themselves. Forge come out in their classic, let's call it a hybrid at this point, let's say 4-3-3 formation, but we know that that is fluid and can change. Taryn Campbell, Jordan Hamilton, Tristan Borges up top. Noah Jensen with Kyle Becker and Hojab Rapport back in the starting lineup. Uh, and he was great in this one. Rosard Rama, Mandrakar James, Alex Ashton, Yodi Janssen, and uh, Malik Olawabi Bellawu making up the back line with Tristan Henry in goal. It was evident early from the very start that the pitch belonged to Forge. Complete dominance uh, in the middle of the, the field. Kyle Becker, right? The, the whatever the, the maestro, the architect, whatever you want to call him, put on an absolute clinic. I mean, when you want to look at film, and if you're a young midfielder, even if you're a coach, and you want to just the, the definition of just a linchpin midfielder, the guy that just makes it go. I mean, this match, go back and watch the tape and watch Kyle Becker just from start. To finish, I don't think you can be that. I mean, I don't know how much better you can be in all facets. I mean, his creation, his just his defending, his tenacity, the, the duels that he won, the feistiness uh, that you like to see, especially in a rivalry match. It was all there. It just it looked like Kyle always had the ball, and, and when there was a crowd, he always came out with the ball. Um, and it wasn't just him controlling the midfield. I mean, when you talk about a team controlling the midfield, it usually is a team effort and it requires multiple midfielders. But I mean, Kyle Becker was just being Kyle Becker. And it, it just, I mean, not enough good things can be said. Uh, Noah Jensen involved as well. And just in terms of, he played a different role in the midfielder, more of an advanced position, more of an attacker in this one. Spent a lot of time in York's area. Uh, and did, did just Created all kinds of havoc. Even when he didn't have the ball, he was a problem because he was so active off the ball. His runs off the ball, his movement off the ball, finding finding the open space, taking defenders with him, creating space for his teammates. Uh, Jensen gets it. And, and I mean, that's why even last season, right, it was his rookie year and he looked just mature beyond his years. And he's taken that next step forward in his progression on, on, on a club that is so deep that it, it's hard to find minutes sometime. And, you know, for Jensen, he goes out there and he makes the most of his opportunities. Alessandro Hoja Rapport returns to the starting lineup and he had an opportunity and around the 12th minute, he had to go just from outside the area just hit the outside of the left post. Love to see him more involved offensively. He gets, I, I have, to his face, I have called him a box-to-box -box midfielder, a complete midfielder. And he always gets a little, I mean, he's a very humble guy. Um, and he always corrects me and says, no, not yet. I, I think I can be a box-to-box -box midfielder. I just, I still have to develop parts of my game. Um, I, I mean, I don't know. 
as far as I'm concerned, he's been that guy. He was that guy last season, the box to box guy. I mean, the amount of times he has shown up in big moments, scored big goals, made key plays. It, it just, and I mean, the work rate, the amount of minutes he's put in. And uh, he's just, he, yeah, he's another guy. I mean, this midfield is so crowded and it's a good problem to have. And so far, everyone making the most of their minutes. And that's what you want to see on a team where sometimes you do have to put ego aside and, and it's tough. We can't discount the fact that a lot of these players, I mean, they're playing for their careers, for their livelihoods, and all of them naturally want to play as many minutes as possible. And to be able to just, you know, humble yourself and have that next man up, man up mentality and and work still work hard in training and just being a good team guy. I mean, that's that's so much easier to say than it is to actually put into practice. But I mean, this team does it to, to perfection. So uh, I mentioned all four early. Three shot attempts in the first 15 minutes. Uh, York didn't even enter Forge's, um, you know, that attacking third of, of York's attacking third. They didn't even enter it until about the 20th minute. Um, and it didn't even result in a shot. In fact, it was a great play defensively. Ashton Yodianson was back. Tristan Borges ran back uh, to break up the play. And uh, team defending, exactly what we talked about with those three keys, which we're going to go through because I mean, this was just, you talk about clinical. I mean, even the three keys just check, check, check. Uh, but we'll get to that in a bit. The scoring spree started in the 25th minute, the league's all time leading goal scorer, Taron Campbell involved. And uh, he opens the scoring one, nothing for forge F C in this one. You know, I, I got to tell you, Campbell had so many opportunities this year. I, I mean, we saw it. Some tough luck, right? I mean, that was a big, a big part. I mean, that really, that's been the theme for this team. But Taron Campbell back on the board, 25th minute, puts Forge up, one nothing. Uh, Becker, Malik playing catch with the ball. They switch to Borges on the right side, volleys it to the opposite post to uh, Jordan Hamilton. He was stopped, rebound, leaks out to Taryn Campbell, who had a wide open goal. And I I mentioned Noah Jensen just creating trouble. He didn't factor in on this, but he was the guy at the center of a crowd just taking defenders with them. When this by the time this ball went in, Noah Jensen was actually on the pitch. He 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 fought his way to the goal. He was on his belly, actually. But again, just creating, creating. Even when you don't have the ball, you can create. Jensen doing the dirty work and uh, Campbell with the goal. So that was in the 25th minute. But a minute later, it just, th this is where you always want to see how both teams respond after a goal. And that usually kind of sets the pace for where the mentality is. After that goal, York kicks off, Forge in their faces, pressing. York overwhelmed, turning the ball over. Uh, within, again, a minute after that, York tried to build something, Forge in their faces, quick turnover. Jordan Hamilton hits the left post. Utter and complete dominance. Just absolute clinic. Uh, a best start to a match that we've seen all year from Forge FC. This was vintage Forge. For York, guys like Moba Bully, Brian Wright, I mean, ghosts, invisible, because they just there was no one to service them the ball because they, I mean, they just couldn't get anything done. So those guys clearly frustrated. That's what you want to see. If you're forge, the top guys on the other club shaking their heads, just looking miserable and frustrated uh, because they were non-factors in this and, and forge saw to it at about the 30th minute mark. I had a look at the numbers because I thought th this is this as dominating as it seems. The possession didn't quite indicate. I mean, 57% possession is still pretty good, but it felt like more. But here's where the real story was. Goal attempts, 7 nothing. Okay, shot attempts were 7 nothing for Forge. 2 nothing on target. Um, we can go down. I mean, dangerous attacks. Forge had 24 dangerous attacks in the first 30 minutes. I mean, uh, and York had 9. Even that, 9, it's low, but it... I was trying to think like when were those dangerous attacks? I don't I I don't it just didn't feel like York had anything going. 
The only opportunity I would say there was a legitimate, this was probably York's best opportunity of the night. It was on a counter, right? One of those things that Forge has to be careful of, especially when things are going well. Um, they can be caught when they get a little too comfortable in their attack uh, by be, just getting beat on, on the counter. In this instance, York did have an opportunity off the counter. Lapere ripped one off Henry's fingertips, went off the bar. That was pretty much it for York. At the 28th minute, their best opportunity of the night came and went. Three minutes later, Noah Jensen, left-footed strike, right off the corner of the bar. At that point, Forge had hit three posts in five minutes. And that, that was almost, that kind of encapsulated Forge's season to this point. It's just not getting the breaks. They're up one nothing, but they're up one nothing. But when you see three posts in five minutes, you get there is that feeling of like, oh no, uh, is York going to get the next opportunity off a counter? All it takes is one shot to, to even this game up. And Forge deserved so much more. But mental toughness, right? They came into this mentally, physically ready. Because despite those missed opportunities, it just did not slow them down whatsoever. Uh, didn't get them down. I, By the way, I loved the Jordan Hamilton, Taryn Campbell. Comp. Absolute forces of nature. Uh, leaning on the York defenders. They just, those two guys, I mean, those big bodies. And they're just, they're so smart. And between the two of them, I mean, the amount of goals these two guys have scored. In, uh, just prolific in the area. And when you have two big bodies, I mean, if you're a defender, you, you're just, you're, it's always a threat when those two guys have the ball in the area. And even when they don't and they're charging, and I mean, both are good in the air, uh, just those problem when they're on the pitch together. And when you have guys who like Becker, like Borges, um, and deliver the ball the way they did in this match, you, you could feel that York was in for some trouble. Um, and then the trouble just, started snowballing for York 33rd minute Campbell two nothing again I've used this word a lot already clinical uh but one of the most clinical finishes you'll ever see it, one pass out of the forge backline into it was collected by Borges just beautiful through ball that splits the defenders Campbell gets in behind and just a little finesse the giant sopolis and that's two nothing it, it just yeah i just i i mean all i wrote here was i i it all were, my notes truly one of the most dominant performances you will see still though a lot to, a lot of soccer to be played you, you got to finish you got to finish where is that killer instinct um well it came 36th minute though this was hard Malik, who, by the way, had one of the performances he had at left back, uh, took a really harsh on a slide tackle in which he got all the way. Um, there was a bit of minor contact, but the, 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 the contact with the ball was first. The player screamed when you, I mean, I you can hear it through the television broadcast. A, a loud, like someone had been stabbed. <laughs> um, the official obviously bought it and um i look i've been saying this for a while i i thought look it, we, we're all about growing and developing the game in this country and these kinds of things the the blatant simulation the over dramatics when there are no fouls there i thought this league there's an opportunity to be a there those things are a huge Turn off for the sports crowd in this country. It just it's just the way it is. As a league, English league into its fifth season. I mean, you can really kind of be a leader in this category. Retroactively, who I don't know who, but watch the tape, go through these matches. When you retroactive punishment. For blatant simu, let's call it blatant simulation. Whatever, it makes it sound more professional when you call it that. But for a guy to scream when he hits the turf after clearly 
multiple contact. When you see disproportionate reactions to these, I don't see what the harm is in a retroactive a warning followed by, I don't know, a booking, a fine, whatever the case may be. Take 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 the lead on 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 this. I mean, this it's going to help. Believe me, people are going to players are going to rethink their actions when there is some punishment. Because by the way, it's also kind of embarrassing to not only do it but then get punished for it. Ultimate embarrassment. That'll smarten things up a little bit. But that's just me. Um, listen, point is, Forge's on a roll. 47th minute, Hamilton, who put together a really, really strong performance, one of his best, tough break, takes a challenge, needed medical attention. He did not scream, by the way. He was actually injured and did not scream. Um, cut his night short. David Chouanier enters the match in his place. And this is just before halftime. Speaking of just before halftime, Mandricard James. He got booked. A really needless challenge on his part. Way up the pitch. There was no threat. It was also, I mean, we were seconds away from the the halftime whistle. A little over aggressive. Strayed from his defensive post. As it stands now, he was so he was booked. As it stands now, um, according to the broadcast, anyway, he'll miss the next. I mean, there's a guy you do not want have missing. Want to have missing matches one of the best defenders in the league, an important piece for this club. But as it stands now, he will not be available for the next match. We'll see. Sometimes these things get overturned. I don't know. I don't know if this one will, but we a 2 nothing lead for Forge. Uh, expected goals, 0.37 for Forge FC, 0. 0.2. For York United, better than a goal expected goal difference. Uh, possession at 54%. Shot attempts, by the way, for Jeff C, 12. 12 attempts in the first half alone. York had three shots on target, 5-1 in favor of Forge FC. And a few posts on top of that. Dangerous attacks, 37-15, uh, to 15, the edge going to Forge. We go into the second half. York, I expected some big changes going into the second half. Change of formation, change of personnel after uh, what had to be an embarrassing for York at home. No changes. And uh, it was good in how this half started because Forge right back on the board. 47th minute, Tristan Borges. If anyone deserves it was Tristan Borges. He gets on the board, his first of the season, 3 0. Um, Kyle Becker again, creator. He lofts a pass, finds Borges on the left wing. Borges cuts into the middle, gets a favorable deflection. Finally, some luck on his side. Poor luck. Borges on the board, Forge of three. Start the second half the way they started and ended the first. Exactly, exactly what I mean. Just all signs pointing to, yeah, this is what we've been waiting for. Forge not done. Uh, seven minutes. Taryn Campbell completes the third goal of the match. 4 nothing Forge. By the way, there have been six hat tricks in CPL history. Three of them Forge players. So uh, Forge making up half of that this league has ever seen. And I mean, the way this goal got started, David Chouanier, the sub late in the, the first half, bust down the right side, chipped his cross over just a sea of bodies. Taryn Campbell timed it perfectly, gets up. Uh, York, I mean, I don't know at this point. It, it's Campbell wanted it more. Clearly gets up, beats his defenders. Seventh season for him. He uh, tied, he's now tied for the league lead Maurice Bevan uh, in goal scored this season at seven. But Campbell's played in 200 less minutes than Bevan. He's an equal on goals. Though. Taron Campbell, 32 for his career. And uh, the all-time leader continues to to on the goal uh, in this league. York saying, we've had enough. 
make some changes, essentially conceding defeat at this point. Hey, make a bunch of subs, take some key guys off, including Mo Babouli. It didn't stop him from getting a red card. We'll get to that in a sec. Forge made some subs, subs in the uh, 67th minute. Damage had been done. Taron Campbell, well-deserved break. He was replaced by Sissoko comes in for Jensen. Uh, Samuel in for Malik. Poku made it into the match. So Forge now feeling comfortable. And uh, they did their Forge thing, just hung on to the ball. Kept possession up um, and just finished off the match. It just, it just patient, fluid. Just it, it was kind of that that well oiled machine we see. We've seen Forge put on the pitch was just. I mean, that this was it. This just this was that team, and uh, they they finished as strong as they started. It was a near perfect match outside of some needless bookings. I mean, if there's one complaint, it, a lot of these bookings, a lot of these tackles just were just needless, especially, I mean, the game was clearly in Forge's control. Um, I get it. You're playing against a rival and things are still heated and there's still some pride in there and some, you know, rivalries within the rivalry and things like that. Uh, but, I mean, we'll see how that affects the um, games for Forge. 85th minute, though, Moba Bully, he's on the bench. He gets a red card from the bench. Um, and then he threw something on his way off going into the tunnel. We'll see what comes from that. And um, all in all, I mean, what can you say? Revisit those three keys. Cause um, I, perfect. Right. Key number one was break the streak. Forge had conceded the first goal. Matches a big reason why they have seen some struggles and haven't gotten the results they wanted because they were playing catch up and not an issue. This is why that first goal is so just monumental sometimes because they, they had the opening goal and then they, after that, hit three posts with the game scoreless. Maybe you're getting a little nervous here, but they, it, they had some comfort, some security, not enough for them to mentally deteriorate because of some missed chances. So all in all, that first goal was huge. They broke the streak. Key number one, huge. Key number two, sheet cleaning. Forge needed to have a positive defensive result as well. Despite these dominating performances that because of some sloppy play defensively. None of it can be blamed on Tristan Henry. I mean, who's been probably the most, one of the most consistent performers on this club all season, shows up week in, week out. You get the same guy all the time, exactly what you want from your keeper. And because he got help from his team on this one. Clean sheet. I mean, you cannot have a bigger check than that because exactly what we got out of this. So two keys down, perfection. Key number three for struggled this season, defending the counter. In this case, your opportunities outside of the one where Henry was for save uh, with his fingertips. Outside of that, I mean, just York was not a threat, just period. Um, a couple of opportunities. On, but I mentioned a play earlier when, when it was uh, when Ashton Yodi Johnson and Borges were able to track the ball and knock their defender body, their defender. Um, a big key to that counter, the counter key is team defense. You can't have players stuck on an Island forced to defend one versus one. All. And this was a pure team defensive effort from all parties, from all levels. And it was, uh, yeah, listen, it was, it was a beautiful thing. Final Expected goals for Jeff C 2.34 expected York uh, 1.01. So based on the expected goals, perhaps York should have had uh, regardless forge with the edge, there. ball possession at 50 favor of forge and shot attempts. Uh, they have York listed at 11. Now, uh, yeah, that's a lot of missing the top. Two did end up uh, finding the goal, and Henry made the stops. Forge, though, shot attempts, 19. 
shots on target seven. I mean, it is difficult to lose with those that stat line like that in terms of shots. And we look at dangerous attacks, 58, 38 for York. Again, I don't necessarily remember all of these um, dangerous attacks for York, but okay. I'm not the one keeping, keeping the stat. Boy, was this a match that this club needed for so many different reasons. They got everything they needed. You had your, your just go off, get his hat. There's a guy you want feeling good. Tristan Borges gets that monkey off his back after, I mean, just having, you know, I'm struggling with no goals, no assists. Now he's had assists in multiple games and he finds the score sheet here. Again, someone who has been a prolific goal scorer in this league, just t- but he found it and you hope this is where the snowball um jordan hamilton had a really strong game malik had his head one of his best games at left back i mean though the midfield when you control i mean this was just i i mean is there a word that transcends dominance because the the, the midfield i mean dominance it, it looked like only one team was playing in the midfield in this one poor and jensen and then even when the it just it, i mean it was unbelievably dominant i mean that dominant and um you can't it is very difficult to lose when you put out the effort that for i mean I, it's almost impossible to lose when you put out this kind of effort and it's uh it's a good sign because some big matches coming up uh though we need to look at the updated table another three points for forge fc and shoot back up into second place of the cpl table 22 points they're now just three points back of first place pacific who does pacific now they've gone winless in their last two after some gaudy stats they've they've come down a little bit in recent weeks now pacific does have a couple of matches in hand on forge uh but these two clubs will play each other couple more times so again the beauty of this league matches in hand all those things you have an eight team league they're all playing each other at some point it's it's tight and they're all playing each other and there's so many swings in points in this league so forge in good shape now goal differential looks so much better at plus two uh than coming into this one at minus two and you know just like that we can talk about this club's struggles but with that performance they're now tied for second in, in as far as the clubs go so the second highest scoring team in the league now everything just looks better the defensive numbers it's amazing what one match can do and with 22 points they are at least rolling york in fourth place now with uh 20 forge and york level one uh york had a one point advantage so this one was big and a i mean you want to talk about a statement game especially on the road Shout out to all the Forge fans who you could hear match your chants from the Barton Battalion. I heard chant loud and clear through this broadcast. I, I mean, York, the fans were just completely dead in this one. And it really felt like not quite a home match, but certainly more of a home match for Forge than it did for York. And and by the way, Forge now road record in the league. They've played eight matches on the road. They have 13 points. That is tied in the league. They're actually tied with York. Who want to build up is that home record because they have the sixth best home record with just nine points in seven matches. Golden opportunity in less than a week, six days from now to be exact. At Tim Moran's Field in Hamilton, Forge FC. Valor, seven o'clock, and you can be because that's 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 you are you have the front and center uh, to catch Forge FC and Valor. Valor, Forge, these two clubs have played some tough matches this year. Forge now looking to build off against York, and um, after Valor, you're gonna want to circle this one because after Valor. After that, 
which this may be a match is on the line. And what a th- what a thing it is week to week. How quickly things can change. And and I listen, I, I read I read the stuff from the fans. I read the stuff the stuff sent to me. I read the comments. Um, I read the boards. I'm always interested in what Forge fans are having. Legitimate concern, right? We we have the, this high bar of expectations for this club and it's a little nerve wracking when things weren't quite going Forge's way. Uh, had all these very went from hey we'll we'll, we'll don't worry we're going to turn this around soon to let's just blow up the entire team and start I mean that's how ridiculous and how worried fans were getting well look a couple weeks from now there's a very good chance this club will be playing for first place on the CPL table so that's how quickly things can turn around so your final once again from York Lions Stadium Forge 4 York 0 Taryn Campbell, easily man of the match with a hat trick, the third hat trick in Forge history, the sixth in CPL history, and Taryn Campbell adding to his all-time goal tally, which is now at 32-7 on the season. He's tied for top spot. Plenty of storylines going into their next match against... We'll have them all for you. Uh, Mackenzie will have you covered throughout the week daily podcast and then i will be back for your match day preview to get you set for valor on saturday all right hope you enjoyed i know i very soon this has been match in review with anthony urcioli on the forge audio network for the latest on all things forge fc subscribe on spotify or wherever you get your podcasts